In the fifth season of Ramsey's Kitchen Nightmares, Gordon heads to a war zone in the form of the Fish and Anchor Restaurant, located in the countryside of Lampeter, Wales. Why is this rustic restaurant a war zone? It's because the owners, Mike and Karen, who have been married for 22 years, are always at each other's throats. You're supposed to work with me. I want you to I'm work with me. working with you, you friggin' yeah, do you? Their constant fighting is driving the locals away. Can Gordon save their marriage, and perhaps more importantly, prevent their business from going bankrupt? Fish and Anchor started after Mike, an ex-boxer, won 700 grand on a football betting pool, which allowed him to pursue his culinary dreams by converting their fish and chips joint into a restaurant. He usually uses cookbooks, including Gordon's, and puts his own twist on the recipes. The problem is Karen, yes, another Karen causing problems, runs the front of house and just doesn't see eye to eye with her husband. Mike even has his own Welsh battle cry for Karen. They not only argue with each other in front of the customers, but also with the customers themselves. Business has naturally suffered as a result, and it's only a matter of time until they have to close their doors. Enter Gordon, who arrives and sees the blue monstrosity of a location that is the fish and anchor. You can't miss that one, can you? Unfortunately, the Germans did. Gordon makes a comment, noting how short Mike, the former boxer, is when they first meet, but then quickly adds, short and powerful. Gordon asks Karen whether she also likes the color blue, and she says absolutely not, perhaps setting the tone for the first of many disagreements we're about to see. Gordon gets seated and observes how a monkfish recipe from his cookbook is on the menu, which he finds eerie enough. It's for the home cook at home, not in a fucking restaurant. The menu is so vast, it's making Gordon dizzy. He ends up ordering the minestrone soup. Not a moment after he takes his first bite, Karen asks him how it is. Gordon asks if she interrogates every customer like this before adding, no wonder they all effed off. Because of this, we don't really get to know whether the dish is tasty or not, but Gordon does mention how it's the weirdest looking minestrone soup he's ever seen. Gordon then receives his monkfish recipe. He tries it and the shallots are raw. However, he does note how the monkfish is actually nicely roasted. Finally, he receives the Welsh classic, a chicken korma curry. The presentation is lacking, however. It looks like something out of a fucking pig's trough. Gordon is not impressed as a whole and decides to skip dessert. Gordon speaks to Mike and Karen and dishes out his concerns about the size of the menu. Mike states how whenever he sees something he likes, he puts it on the menu. We then get more insight about the actual dishes. Gordon's biggest gripe was with the korma curry, which turned out to be from a jar of Uncle Ben's curry sauce. Gordon appreciates Mike's passion, but gives him the hard truth. He's not a chef, and his menu is basically a wish list. Mike seems to accept the criticism gracefully. Gordon, meanwhile, browses the net to see what customers are saying about Fish and Anchor. Probably not a lot of good things if there are any customers, but to his surprise, he sees a number of great reviews, some being a bit too great and almost familiar. He prints out some of the reviews and confronts Mike, asking him which of the reviews he ended up writing. Mike, being honest, picks the one he wrote and said he was just trying to get his restaurant some traction. It's time to get serious now. Gordon manages to somehow get some locals into the door as he wants to see how Mike deals with cooking for a full restaurant. While Mike was initially confident, he eventually starts running around like a headless chicken. As Gordon noted, most of the menu recipes are for home cooks who have time on their hands. It's a lot more difficult to cook quickly when you have customers waiting for their food. Instead of cooking for three to four tables at a time, Mike was cooking for one. The results were customers waiting for food as long as two hours and choosing to eat the bar snacks to quell their hunger. Gordon witnesses firsthand a spat between Mike and Karen. But it gets worse. Karen is arguing with customers and it's getting heated. She tells multiple customers to leave and never come back. One angry customer, who looks like he could be a local Billy Connolly impersonator, storms into the kitchen area where Gordon is having a talk with Karen to vent his frustration. I'm going home. I couldn't give a shit about your crappy bloody pub. Is it a wonder there are no return customers at Fish and Anchor? Gordon has never seen anything like this before. Customers were getting chucked out, half the customers didn't get served, and Mike and Karen have suddenly gone missing. He only finds some sense in the waitresses who inform him it's always been like this. Gordon eventually finds Mike and Karen and tries to talk some sense into them. To their credit, they are responsive to his criticism. 
Mike, in particular, is looking to absorb as much knowledge and insight from Gordon as possible so he can improve. The first step for Gordon is getting rid of Mike's dozens of cookbooks. Gordon wants him to ditch copying other recipes and go back to his own Italian roots. There's been an Italian community in West Wales for years. With most of Mike's family hailing from Naples and him being proud of his Italian heritage, Gordon looks to channel this into a classic Italian dish, spaghetti meatballs. After helping Mike pick out some tomatoes at a local farm, Gordon helps Mike recreate his grandmother's recipe for spaghetti meatballs with the goal being to cook for more than one table at once. Gordon also makes Mike remove the tikka masala from the menu. He urges him to call his wife by her name, Karen, rather than grunting his Welsh battle cry every time he needs her. Gordon demonstrates what he means, which has the waitresses trying so hard not to laugh at his impression of Mike. Ah! That was you grunting like a troll. With that out of the way, it's time for the new and improved fish and anchor to test its wings. Gordon invited the local rugby team for dinner that evening, and they were starving to say the least. Luckily for them, it only took minutes for the spaghetti meatballs to arrive. The reviews were generally very good. It wasn't all perfect though. Karen was nowhere to be found. Gordon later finds her outside smoking a cigarette and lectured her on taking things seriously. To make matters worse, there's now confusion over a table's order. It turns out Karen forgot to write out an order of venison, someone's main course order. Gordon is angry, but still remains cool enough as he tells her she will have to take lessons on how to take an order the next day. Karen, however, doesn't stay cool and starts arguing with Gordon in never-ending fashion, and the customers can hear it, too. Gordon gets fed up while Mike goes to talk to Karen and the results are disastrous. They literally have a sparring match, shouting at each other with expletives. Gordon tries to warn her again that her screaming and shouting will ruin the business, but Karen continues to argue back. Gone up there, I've apologized. I can't do any more. This time, however, Gordon manages to calm her down somewhat as he says he will help her run the dining room. Mike and Karen then try and have a heart to heart where he tries to convince her to just stop and listen to Gordon for a few days, but even that's a struggle. Meanwhile, after learning he can't rely on reviews from the web, Gordon decides to ask around in person about how the local Welsh people feel about the fish and anchor, due to the owners constantly shouting. The reviews are not good, with many talking about the restaurant's bad reputation, or how they stopped going as a result of the intense atmosphere. Gordon also learns that Mike got in trouble with the law for having a spat with the locals. For now, his goal is to become a marriage counselor for Mike and Karen and quick. He stresses the importance of keeping a united front in order for the business to thrive. For once, they both seem to get the message. As for Gordon, he begins his own plans to help the business thrive. His first order of business is getting completely rid of Mike's menu and reworking a new one with the help of some people from a local catering college. Gordon eventually designs a streamlined Italian menu just for Mike. It's full of tasty, rustic food that is quick and easy for him to make. Next up for Gordon is working on the scary exterior of Karen, or as he fittingly calls her, a Welsh dragon. He's got some volunteers in to observe how Karen serves them. The waitresses like Mena do fine. Karen, however, struggles and even freezes up. In the end though, she finally smiles and Gordon's goal is that for the smile to remain constant whenever there are real customers. Gordon also gets the renovations underway as he switches up the blue interior and sports bar atmosphere of the restaurant and transforms it into something more Italian and family-like, which impresses the waitresses when they see it. The real test is winning the trust of the locals, though. Gordon gets everyone to ride on a tractor and spread the word about the newly revamped restaurant. Mike even gets people to try out his meatballs. Gordon even humorously provides a punching bag for both Mike and Karen back at the Fish and Anchor to vent out their frustration. Before the big night, Gordon gives Mike a chef's jacket to symbolize his journey in finally becoming a proper chef. So far, things are going well. The menu is doing its job, food is getting served, and customers are happy. The waitresses are doing a good job, and even Karen is charming the guests. Mike, however, is the only one panicking as the orders start piling up. Food service is slowing down, and customers are not getting their food. Mike is on the edge, and after such a bright and promising start, Gordon is giving up as he says he's gutted. To add insult to injury, the waitress Mena slips on the floor and falls unconscious. The ambulance is called, and the night service comes to an end. Gordon revisits Fish and Anchor a month later. Luckily, we learn that Mena recovered from her fall and went home the next day. Whether the restaurant has recovered is another story. To Gordon's surprise, he doesn't see a blue building anymore, but a more inviting white one. 
Mike actually painted it. He meets Mike and Karen and learns that customers have doubled and that they have finally broken even. He also learns that the duo have stopped arguing but doesn't believe it completely. And so he rings up diners from the reservation list and asks about their experience. To his surprise, there was not a single complaint about the food, service, or any mention of there being any arguing. Gordon now wants to see things in person. What he ends up seeing is Mike acting like a chef in control of his kitchen. The dishes are flying out, the dining atmosphere is great, and Karen remains calm and relaxed with a smile on her face. She mentions to Gordon how Mike is proud of himself again, which has contributed to his changed demeanor while she is actually enjoying herself at work too. It's basically a far cry from that first night where half the customers didn't get served and Mike and Karen ended up chucking customers out. Gordon ends things by gifting them an empty cookbook with a picture of Mike jokingly strangling Karen and tells them to fill it up with their own unique fish and anchor recipes. Gordon departs on that November 2007 evening with a sense of optimism that with this new menu and no more outbursts between Mike and Karen, Fish and Anchor could stay in business for a while. In an interview with Wales Online, a week after filming, Mike shared details of what it was like to be on Ramsey's Kitchen Nightmares. The first time we met Gordon is on camera at the start of the week. You don't get to meet him beforehand, you just come straight in to get started. He then went on to say, So far, we have had a fantastic response to the dishes. My own dishes were even out selling Gordon's when we had a little reopening party after Gordon had finished. He concludes by saying he thinks it is a good story and that it will make for some excellent television. Gordon Ramsay was on the Jonathan Ross show that same week discussing his time at the Fish and Anchor. I I've heard what you said. After showing a preview of the upcoming episode, Gordon shared his thoughts on Mike and Karen. The problem wasn't the restaurant, it was them, and they quickly sorted out their relationship and a big effect for the restaurants. Absolute sweethearts. <laughs> no, seriously, when well, she's fast asleep. But I guess... <laughs> we won't ask you how you know that. Um, <laughs> Post-episode airing, the TV reviews said the Fish and Anchor episode was one of the best episodes of the series. It indeed made for excellent television, just as Mike had predicted it would. Viewers were a fan of Ramsey's quip wondering how the Germans missed bombing this place in World War II, almost wishing they hadn't missed it. Classic Ramsey humor for you. The actual bombings were all about Swansea, miles away from the quiet of Lampeter. Swansea's Victorian market and the whole industrial scene took a serious hit because it was all part of the Germans' big plan to shake up Britain's war efforts. Meanwhile, Lampeter was just out of the spotlight, probably because there wasn't much there the Germans thought worth bombing. No big factories or docks like Swansea. Just a lot more sheep and quiet streets. Other viewers also like the part with the angry customer that storms in the kitchen to tell off Karen and Gordon, with one poster saying he looks like a combination of Weird Al Yankovic and Billy Connolly, along with the voice of Ozzy Osbourne. And, and you happen to be sitting in a bloody shit. And that's for you. Viewers really got a laugh when Ramsey quipped Karen, you can't run around like Shrek in a frock. You can't run around like fucking Shrek in a frock. You've got to have some form of control. Showing off that classic British humor and knack for coming up with witty one-liners. Even though things seemed to be picking up for the fish and anchor after their Kitchen Nightmares makeover, the timing couldn't have been worse. The subprime mortgage crisis hit, starting in America and quickly going global around 2008. This was a rough patch for anyone in the beverage and hospitality industry, with layoffs and an overall slowdown in the economy affecting sales. Then, to add to the trouble, reviews for the Fish and Anchor started to dip, with some folks saying Mike and Karen slipped back into their old ways. Sadly, the restaurant couldn't shake off that rep and ended up closing less than a year after appearing on Kitchen Nightmares in 2008. It was sold in 2009 and tried a fresh start under new management in 2011 even adding a bit of flair with black trim lines to the previously all-white exterior, first to the lower windows and then also to the upper level as well. Mike thought about different paths forward, like opening another restaurant or even moving back to Italy as he was scouting properties online. But as with many of the UK Kitchen Nightmare stories, it's hard to find out what exactly happened next. Here's hoping Mike and Karen are doing all right these days, wherever they are. As of now, the old fish and anchor spot looks to be empty again, after getting another paint job at some point. So, what do you think was the final straw for the fish and anchor? Was it the tough economy, or did they just fall back into old habits? Sometimes, it's hard to shake off the past.